You are in a world of nebulous truth, controlled by a secret cabal of mystery, conspiracy, and propaganda. What you see to be true is not true. What you know to be true is not true. The cabal that gives you truth will tell you it's not true. This world is the 2020 election in the United States of America. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chase and I'm sure maybe you've heard that uh, the conspiracy of the 2020 election was, yeah, it was true. It was true. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they published an article about it. You know, just because that's what you do, you know, when when you're so confident that nothing is going to happen to you for a conspiracy to fortify the election, as they put it, not rig. They, uh, YouTube, I, I'm going off of time here. Okay, this is the Time article. They they fortified the election. They didn't they didn't rig it. They just fortified it. You know, the secret cabal as time. Magazine says the secret cabal uh, organized and, uh, you know, made sure the, the proper outcome came out of the election. We're going to go through the intro because that's definitely where the, the juiciest parts are. Um, and then I'll delve a little bit into some of the other parts of this uh, article. I encourage you to go read it on your own. Um, if you're a fast reader, it'll be a fast read. But if you're a slow reader like me, it'll probably take you like at least a half an hour. I'm jumping right into it. So a second odd thing happened amid Trump's attempts to reverse the result of the election. Corporate America turned on him. Hundreds of major business leaders, many of whom had backed Trump's candidacy and supported his policy, called him on, called on him to concede. The president felt something was amiss. It was all very, very strange, Trump said on December 2nd. Within days after the election, we witnessed an orchestrated effort to anoint the winner, even while many key states were being counted. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was strange, wasn't it, Trump? In a way, Trump was right. Wait, what? Wait, it's literally what it says. In a way, Trump was right. There was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, there was. You were right, Trump. There was, there was a total conspiracy happening. Just, but hey, you know, it's afterwards, you know, go, go, go away. Go away, old man. One that both curtailed the protest and coordinated the resistance from CEOs. Both surprises were the result of an informal alliance between left-wing activists and business titans. So we see the beginning of this organize, or of this organizing of a group. Now, okay, I want to make perfectly clear. I, I am not one to hop on like, you know, just weird like what feels weird like oh there's a hit there's a secret group and they organize everything i come with a lot of doubt when i hear talk of that um i don't just immediately believe it i, I this this that's literally what this is going to detail that th this was a secret group that organized itself to control the direction of an election that sounds mad but it's completely true. It's, it's rocking my world a little bit. Their work, this group, touched every aspect of the election. They got states to change voting systems and laws and help secure hundreds of millions in public and private funding. So yeah, they got states to change voting elections and laws. And just so you know, like when this started in October of 2019, this wasn't like, you know, in the middle of 2020 and they were like, hey, well, you know, we need, we need to organize and get something done. And because the timeline, it, this is not a fluid timeline. She jumps around with like various, at various timestamps. And this all started in October of 2019. So in October of 2019, they already started this organizing of how to make sure Trump doesn't win. They fended off voter suppression lawsuits recruited armies of poll workers. What does that mean? 
I, I'm very curious to know more about that specific sentence right there. They recruited armies of poll workers. Their main focus, this cabal, as it will become, as, as she will call it, I'm not making that up, they recruited armies of poll workers. Okay, they, they focused their attention on the key states, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, here in Arizona. It's saying here they recruited armies of poll workers. Well, I, you, you can't help but think, well, I think they would only recruit people that probably believe what they do, right? Because their whole intention is to make sure they get the correct outcome of this election. I'm, I, I want to know a lot more about that, of that, about that, really recruited armies of poll workers and got millions of people to vote by mail for the first time. They successfully pressured social media companies to take a harder line against disinformation and use data-driven strategies to fight viral smears. They executed national public awareness campaigns that helped Americans understand how the vote count would unfold over days or weeks, preventing Trump's conspiracy theories and false claims of victory from getting more attraction. Were they conspiracy theories? Because you literally said Trump was right there was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes. So w were they actually conspiracy theories? There was a lot of times while I was reading this article that I, I had to just, I had to stop. This is one of those times. I'm drinking a Dr. Pepper. Not sponsored, but because if, if you take too much of this in, you, I think your head explodes. So if you're, if you're watching, grab a drink, buckle up, stay tuned, watch, you know, maybe grab yourself a copy of this. She goes on to, to gaslight President Trump and his followers, okay? So the president spent months insisting that mail ballots were democratic plot and the election would be rigged. Okay, well, let's let's see here. Well, they started this chatter of organizing mail-in ballots in October of 2019 and trying and making states 24 of them, at least that I know of, illegally change their election system to coordinate mail-in ballots, okay? He spent months insisting that mail-in, that mail ballots were a democratic plot and the election would be rigged. And he spent months following November 3rd trying to steal the election he lost with lawsuits and conspiracy theories. You literally said, Part of the whole plan was doing mail-in ballots. That's what Trump is calling out, and now you're calling him a conspiracy theorist. It gets worse. This is the inside story of the conspiracy to save the 2020 election. Again, her words, not mine. Based on the access to groups inner workings, never before seen documents and interviews with dozens of those involved from across the political spectrum, it is the story of an unprecedented creative, creative and determined campaign whose success also reveals how close the nation came to disaster. Whose opinion of disaster? Every attempt to interfere with the proper outcome of the, of the election was defeated. What in the hell does that sentence supposed to mean? Every attempt to interfere with the proper outcome of the election was defeated. What was the proper... Sorry, I know what the proper outcome was. My bad for being an idiot. Says Ian, ba saying it says Ian Basson. But it's massively important for the country to understand that it didn't happen accidentally. Of course it didn't happen accidentally. It was organized. The system didn't work magically. Of course not. Democracy is not self-executing. Take note of that line. Democracy is not self-executing. We can't trust the people. We can't trust the people to do what we want them to do. That's exactly what they're saying right there. We cannot trust the people to do what we need them to do. This is, this is the coup d'etat of all the paragraphs. 
What, that's why the participants want the secret history of the 2020 election told, even though it sounds like a paranoid fever dream. A well-funded cabal of powerful people ranging across industries and ideologies, working together behind the scenes to influence perceptions, change rules and laws, steer media coverage, and control the flow of information. What does that sound like? I'm genuinely curious. What does that sound like? Hmm. I don't know. Influence perceptions, change rules and laws, steer media coverage, control the flow of information. Sounds a lot like, uh, you know, fascism. Controlling the narrative, controlling what people can see, what they can think, what can be heard. That's what it sounds like. It sounds a lot like fascism. But... They were not rigging the election. They were fortifying it. It totally sounds like we were rigging it, but no, we were, we were fortifying it. We were just making sure that the proper outcome was going to happen. That, that's all we were doing. And we're gonna publish it too, by the way, because you know, who gives a damn? It, it's drink time, grab your drink. Grab your drink. I'm going to get into a little bit of the, the, the meat of this article and just pull out some things that I thought were particularly interesting. Um, and one of the sections in this article is called the disinformation defense. Um, and it's about getting big tech on board, Twitter, Facebook, and others, as it says. So it starts off by basically saying, we need to stop disinformation. That's, that's our main purpose. We need to stop disinformation. So, and one of the ladies that's heading this part of the cabal up, what's her name? Laura Quinn. And her main mission is to stop the spread of disinformation. What's disinformation? Like we said, like we know, it's information you don't agree with. That's what disinformation is. The most important takeaway from, uh, I almost said Zoe Quinn. <laughs> the most important takeaway from Quinn's research, however, was that engaging with toxic content only made it worse. Well, that's, that's, that's your opinion, obviously. That's, that's your opinion. When you get attacked, the instinct is to push back call it out, say, this isn't true, Quinn says, but the more engagement something gets, the more the platforms boost it. The algorithm reads that as, oh, this is popular. People want more of it. The solution, this is, this is beautiful. This, oh, it's right out of the fascist playbook. The solution, she concluded, was to pressure platforms to enforce their rules by removing content or accounts that spread disinformation and by more aggressively policing it in the first place. Remove content or persons that are spreading information that we don't want the public to hear. Uh, you know, for example, mm, I don't know, Hunter Biden. Remember, remember Hunter Biden, that whole laptop scandal? I, you know, a lot of people don't. Why? Because MSM never covered it. Now we know why. We know exactly why. Twitter covered it up. Now we know why. Took off anything that, anything mentioning it under the guise of, oh, it was hack content, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Facebook, same thing. Now we know why. And you know what? There was a poll done on Biden supporters, or I should say people who voted for Biden. And, it's, and, they, and, it, and the poll was, if you had known about the Hunter Biden scandal, because you didn't know before, if you had known about it, would you have voted for Biden? 17% said they would not have voted for Biden. Had they known about what Hunter Bi about the Hunter Biden scandal, whatever, they would not have voted for Biden. 17% is a lot of people, okay? And if, you, and if you go across all the 81 million people that voted for Biden, and you take 17%, well, just take 10% out, you know? Just reduce it even more. That's that's like eight million people. You do the math. Who would have won? It then it then gets into 
the mail-in voting and spreading the word. Remember, this started in October 2019 before anybody cared about COVID, before anybody knew about COVID for that matter. So they needed mail-in voting. I, I don't know. The pandemic was pretty convenient for that. Even, even after Dr. Fauci and some other came out and said, hey, no, you can totally go and vote in person. Just, you know, stay your six feet apart and all that kind of good stuff and wear your mask. You, you can totally do it. But no, 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 no. <laughs> you need to mail in vote. That's, that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do, mail-in vote. And Trump saying that it's a conspiracy theory with the mail-in voting, we all know it's not. It's, it's, it's totally legit. You can do it, it's totally legit. And, and in the article, it reads, it was crucial for voters to understand that despite what Trump was saying, mail-in votes weren't susceptible to fraud and that it would be normal if some states weren't finished counting votes on election night. Now I understand why they were saying the red mirage. Okay, and what the red mirage was, was on election day, it's gonna look like Trump is just trampling ahead and on to victory. And then during, and then, you know, when the mail-in ballots come in, then, you know, then Biden will start pulling away. And all the mainstream media was talking about was this red mirage. Boom, propaganda, 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 throwing it back at you. It's telling you what you need to know. And that way you're not asking, hey, what the heck? Why, is, what's going on here? This part gets me. She says, most analysts had recognized there would be a blue shift in key battlegrounds. That's what, that's what the whole red mirage, Trump's winning election day, and then and that's when the blue shift comes. The blue wave comes back. The surge of votes breaking toward Democrats driven by tallies of mail-in ballots. But they hadn't comprehended how much better Trump was likely to do on election day. Shoot! Trump did better than we thought. Holy crap, what do we do? Audience, you can answer that question. I'm not gonna say it here because YouTube's not gonna like me for saying that. So I'm not going to say it, you know, <laughs> that whole graph, you know, oh my gosh, this is, this is insane. This is insanity. And then afterwards, you know, any claim, if people want to go off and say, you know, Hey, there were some fishy things that happened. Boom. Big tech censors them. You can, you, now, so now you can't talk about it. You can't talk about it. You can't go on to Twitter or Facebook and, and talk about it. That's not part of the narrative, bro. It's not part of the narrative, bro. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta dial that back. And then of course, when people express concern and they go out and be like, hey, you know, what's going on? Let's go to the voting place. You know, we're, what's going on here? Oh, they get to the voting place, mm, board up the windows. You know, n nothing to see here, nothing to see here, everything is fine. And uh, as Time Magazine says, they show a picture of, you know, people and the caption reads, Trump supporters seek to disrupt the vote count at Detroit's uh, TCF Center. I'm not gonna lie, this part is a little personal for me because I was one of those people here in Arizona, I went down to the election center with others to find out what was going on. We weren't there to be disruptive or disrupt the process or be violent or, or cause some mob. We just wanted answers. Like, what's going on? Why is this happening? And that's when I interviewed Mike Cernovich that you can see on my uh, channel. It's some videos back. There's even an interview with me on BBC. <laughs> <laughs> so, out there. We just wanted answers. That was it. That's what these people are there for. They just want answers. They're not there to disrupt democracy or whatever you want to call it. They're just there because they're worried about what's going on and you boarding up the windows, you know, it doesn't look very good. She lays out how, how it all went down. This cabal, big tech, corporations, multiple, multiple little um, groups and factions and, you know, nonprofits and all that stuff, joining forces to
to make sure that this all happens. And this, the, this is where I just get so, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know how to express it is at the very end of this article, she writes this line, democracy won in the end. The will of the people prevailed. Molly, how can you write 6,500 words detailing how a cabal fortified the election to make sure the proper outcome happened and doing everything in their power to raise propaganda to convince the populace of, of everything is cool, everything is kosher, this is normal. How can you detail all that out and then end it with democracy won in the end, the will of the people prevailed. The will of the people was ignored. The will of the people had nothing to do with this. That, that, is, that is pure, just drink time, drink time. Anyways, guys, that's the video. If you were horrified by this video as much as I was, then please go down and like it. If you have not yet already, please subscribe to the channel. And there's, well, I hope there's not more new content like this coming, uh, but there is daily, there, there is content that comes on this channel. Um, so please subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. So that way you're, that way you get, you know, notified anytime I post. And please go down and comment. I really am interested in what people have to say on this. You know, I've been, I've been diving deep into this. So I, I really am curious what um, viewers like you think about this. So as always, guys, peace out. And God bless America.